you know, these are full size diagrams that came in the book and I mistook them for bracing. These are actually contour guides. It has a little map here. Using the contour guides to check the dome shape of the top. And it looks like I still need to come down a little bit and I'll get to that with the sander. So I'm gonna keep sanding till there's no more daylight. Yeah, and then we keep going till I get down to my quarter inch width on the edges. I'm about there. This is where I always gotta be careful on the on the front. But yeah, this still has some tooth. I have another fresh paper standing by. I'll keep going. Ooh, we're getting real close now. Now you start getting in a you start getting in a real good mood because these dimples are all disappearing. They're starting to look like a guitar top. So a combination of scraping and sanding and getting those last dimples out of the drill marks on this back. I got some 60 grit. And I used the power sander too. And now we can tap tune it. The tone's dropping down more. There's still a few more little divots, but I'll scrape those away. On the form, I'm redoing it in the style of an acoustic guitar form from another book. Robert's book is great, but I don't really have the kind of bandsaw to cut two and a half inch thick laminated plywood. So what I did is I took some three quarter, a couple of pieces of three quarter, and I cut the profile of the guitar. That was easier for me. I just did it with the saber saw, you know, the little jigsaw. Then I got some of that swing set gazebo cedar and, and did a run of little one inch blocks that will glue in here. And you make them a little proud of the edge. That way you can still fine tune your shape. Here's the other side. Then you end up with a nice consistent form. It's two and a half inches like the book calls for on the arch top. And then I'll be able to fine tune the shape having much better control than I did with that big fat chunk of laminated plywood. Let's continue this and then you, you know, I, you glue it all on and then I just take little finished nails and I drilled pilot holes and tapped them in. Here's the other book I was talking about. Build Your Own Acoustic Guitar by Jonathan Kincaid. Complete instructions and full-size plans. We will build this guitar someday, but I, I referred to it for his, his chapter on building forms. So I found this to be a little more useful to me. Plus it's my warm up for when I go to build this. So when they, when the book said, uh, when Jonathan's book, the acoustic guitar book, said make it a little proud, that means, you know, I got like a sixteenth of an inch sticking out or an eighth, just a, above the edge. That way it gives you some adjustment room. And I'm just using tight bond. And I get all these stuck on. A little proud. I adapted the height of this form to be closer to what I need for the arch top. Jonathan's form for the acoustic guitar is a lot deeper. Almost flush, but just sticking out a bit of where that, that cutaway goes. This is going to be tricky for me, the cutaway. For this curve, I might go ahead and just put, I have a couple extra blocks. I'll put another extra reinforcement for the curve. And that will be able to shape it nicely. 
Come right in there. Right in there. Okay, so now we take this. That pipe bond sets pretty quickly, so I can work on it now. Gotta figure out where we want that. You take a square and make sure your your two halves are squared. And the, this edge has got to be flush because this is where the two halves come together. And that looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good. So this will all fit nicely. And then hit, hit all the little spot, the tops with the glue. Check for being square. This is actually got to come down more. Right about there. Pop a little pilot hole. So we don't split the split the wood underneath. Could get tangled up. Don't hit your thumb. Okay, now we're. Now we're tacked in. It's pretty good. Let me go hit, go in and hit all the hit all the pilot holes. Brings brings back memories of those carpenter days when I got out of high school. The drummer's dad owned a construction company. And I learned how to use a hammer back then. So I'm a rough carpenter. And now I gotta learn to be a little more precise. Alright, I'm feeling a little more confident with this form. So now you could either clamp those together or you screw them together now I'll be able to like work with the sides and then be able to glue them on and that'll be great while I had the saw out making that form I went ahead and cut my rough shapes for the bracing now I'm gonna use cedar from the gazebo lumber since I don't have any spruce, but this is lightweight and easy to carve and strong. So that'll be good. And I got some mahogany for the curve lighting, but the mahogany is what some of the other books called for. So I'll cut some kerf lining out of that. So we had to do a little cutting while we were at it before we finished carving the top. Now we're gonna drill the little guide holes for the back plate and the top plate. <laughs> it's actually the back of the back plate and the back of the top plate. So I've got this this board, this is very symbolic, you know, the cutout from the form. This will be a good board that I can clamp down to the drill press. I just got, a, you know, a dowel. This actually came from like the uh, art supply model building store you set that to the to the depth you want then you take your plate you know we already domed the plate on the front so now you go in and you rest that down on the peg and then you drill it in and it stops a quarter inch short and, and then we get to the right depth all around and then we scrape out until the holes are gone. Then we got a nice arch top shape. So I'll just drill a quick hole and set this with a little glue. I'm just gonna back it up with another board to be certain I don't poke through over time. Here we go, I have this little stick that's a quarter inch. 
So I use that to set up my depth. And I'm just going to touch it. I'm not going to squish. And then I'm going to let it up slightly. And tighten it. This should be good. It's just barely touching it. And now we start. Now here's a little thing I ran I'm running into. Uh, these are higher than that. I gotta use a different clamp that has a lower profile so I don't get in the way and have inaccurate drilling. Yeah, this spring clamp will do the trick. There we go. Okay, now we could move it around to where we need it. <laughs> it scared me to death, but it didn't go through. And now I know how deep to carve it. So I'm just going to take it. And then when you get to the end, you know, you're not, you won't drill through accidentally because my edges are already where I wanted them. It's really just the whole contour, probably about just out to here. So this is working out pretty good. In fact, you know, you just keep touching. Like you can see on the ends, it barely goes down. And then on the very ends, it doesn't even touch. So that's just what I want. So I'm just going to drill tons of holes. And then I'll be able to scrape it away a little easier and get it smooth on the inside. And we'll have a... a nice little arch for the back and then we repeat for the front oh it's taking a while but it's coming along so so far no holes you can see where the uh, dowel is kind of touching it but we'll be able to sand that all down and then uh, it's like a bug gut after it but there's something remarkable is the tap tune is really dropping down it's really getting a lot lower the more we move that wood out and getting a, a little more of a sustain i was tossing around the idea of putting a router bit in here and then clean it out i, I don't know since this is scrap wood, I might try it. So I went ahead and went for it. I put a router bit on there. You know, you can't go too much at a time and it won't reach all the way in here. So I'll have to chisel that bit later, but this is down to the last of it. And this tone is really dropping down. So I'll... It's like little bugs have been eating it. As long as the dome is where you want, then you have this little guide pin and it'll just follow that and you'll have a pretty uniform thickness all the way through. And then you could do your final scraping. This works for me, especially on this reclaimed lumber that doesn't really chisel that well because it's kind of flaky and the green isn't that fine. It's a little slice of cheese.
Yeah, now we're starting to get nice, nice thud. Probably hard to hear from there. Yeah, I'll just use the little mouse sander to get these termite tracks out. So I just used the little mouse and I hit it with some 40 grit. We bought a bunch of a uh, bundle of paper online in different grits and they went down to 40 and that really took out a lot of this stuff. And now I get my, my little gauge and I'm actually right where I want to be. I got just a, a little bit of clearance, but I got that thickness about 3 16 of an inch everywhere we'll just do a little bit of scraping i'm gonna hit it with the 120 just to smooth it all out and uh you know we got a we got a hole in this one knot maybe i'll just leave it a, a hole this is a nail hole or something but the tone is uh really dropped down so 120 and then I'll start on the top. We gotta fine tune the dome first before I get carried away with the with the inside carving. So I'm getting the cedar top ready for the back carving. I'm making my dome just the way I want. And it's pretty close to the template that he made almost there I'm gonna just go with what I have I'm just a little high in here but I think the final scraping so what I what I'm doing I'm just kind of seeing what this speed bump feels like if it's kind of the same on both sides and then you could coming off the hill it's it's thick right in here and I use my scraper to to get some of the material down. And then I'll use that that 40 grit sandpaper to really to get the slope working. There's one high area down here. And then you just kind of hit the whole thing real quick with the scraper. And work on this one high spot. It's kind of hard with all the knots. But I think we just got to Maybe you just gotta live with it. This is kind of fat right in here too. Yeah. I'll get the final shape of the sandpaper and then we'll go after the the back with a quarter inch depth. Okay, so I I tried the router method on the top plate and you know it's just a little too aggressive. It did okay on the back plate with the pine. And we're getting a good tone out of it. It's, it's a nice fat, fat tone. So I'm just going to go after, I drilled all the holes, you know, so my top's going to be around a quarter inch thick. And I'll get back to my... To old school carving. We'll knock down the big chunks and get close. And then I have this uh, like this gouge spoon or you know the spoon gouge it's slightly curved curved and then we'll after we get close then we can start peeling off 
and get all the little dimples out. Then I'll hit it again with the sander. Okay, so a combination of things. Drill press, chisel, hand plane. But it's getting more and more lightweight. And that tone is dropping. And I made this little This little thing out of scrap foam cord to kind of hold it so when you're pressing it doesn't flex too much. Okay, the top plate. You can still see some of the divots, but we're going to keep scraping. And it's split a little bit right here. But I think we can manage that with some glue and tap tune. The tones really drop down. And it's got a little more sustain. And we'll uh, check some of the depth. It's actually, it's right where it needs to be most everywhere. It's a little thick on the edge here. But pretty much, it's pretty much there. With my little gauge. Uh, I'll hit it with that mouse sander to smooth out the inside and then we'll get ready for the braces. Well, actually, F holes first and then the bracing. That's it for chapter three. See you next week. We'll get going on chapter four and five, the F holes and the top braces.